So uh, before we start calculating uh, rates and all that fun stuff, uh, just some more uh, sort of conceptual information about reactions. It turns out reactions aren't always as simple as just, boom, two things bump into each other, and that's it. Okay, that's a reaction. Sometimes it can occur in multiple steps. Okay, so let's consider this following reaction. Hydrogen plus 2HCl goes to 2HClI2. Okay. Have you considered it? That's what it says. It says consider it, so we got to consider it. All right, so let's think about how this plays out, okay? So this is one mole of H2 and two moles of ICL, okay? So let's put those in a flask, okay? So let's draw a flask. All right. H2. We got two ICLs. Okay. What phase are these molecules in? What? They're gases, right? They're gases. So make sure you put a stopper on. Okay. You don't want them to escape. All right. So you got to get the stopper. All right, so this is a reaction involving three mole molecules. Now, if it required all three molecules to collide at the same time, like all three of them to hit with the proper orientation, that's called a termolecular reaction, so ter for three. And those are actually pretty rare. Those don't happen. The likelihood of three molecules coming together at the same time with all the kinetic energy, everything right, just doesn't happen. So a lot of times that reactions that involve multiple, two or more than two uh, reactants uh, happen in multiple steps, okay? So what first happens is, you know, a hi this hydrogen will bump into this ICL. So first, we've got hydrogen plus ICL produces HI plus HCl. That's the first reaction. Okay. So that happens. Okay. Let's draw what we got left over in our flask. Okay. All right, so now we got an HCI and an HCL that's producing that first step, <coughs> and still that other ICL molecules. Okay, the next, uh oh, about the stopper. I don't know why the stopper changed color. Okay, something we'll investigate later. Okay. So now what happens is that HI molecule that was just produced will bump into that ICL molecule at some time and produce some HCL and I2.
All right, so let's draw what we got now. So what do we got? We got some H C L, some H I. and some iodine. It shouldn't be, should it? It should we have the HCL and then two HCLs, yeah. It's a good, good catch. I definitely did that on purpose. Why isn't my eraser working? Uh oh. It was right. Is anything working? There it goes. Alright, so now we got HCL, two HCLs and iodine. Alright, so we have two reactions that occurred. Alright. <clears throat> and we can add them up to see what happened in our overall reaction. We know how to add chemical equations, right? We just add up anything that's on one side, and if something's on both sides, what happens? Cancels out. So we got a hydrogen. That's it. Plus one ICL and another ICL. So that's two ICLs, right? Produces HI. Hi. Or no, that's not it. That's that's not it. It's hydroiodic or HI, and that cancels out, doesn't it? Produces one HCl, two HCLs, plus an iodine. Okay. And so this, the bottom equation in black, should look exactly like our overall equation up here, and it is, okay? So that's called my overall equation. See, that's just too close to that. I was asking for it. How do I get rid of that? Overall equation. Yep. And the two reactions that occurred first to make the overall reaction are called my elementary steps or my elementary reactions. Or reaction steps, you can call them. So it turns out that overall chemical reactions can occur in multiple steps that we call elementary steps. Okay. And there are even things that are produced and consumed and exist for some period of time that don't end up in the overall reactions. You don't see them in the overall reactions. What was our example for that? What was produced, existed for some period of time, but didn't end up in the overall reaction? HI. HI is called a reaction intermediate. And what a reaction intermediate is this a molecule, atom, or ion? that is produced, but then used up in elementary reaction steps.
So a limiting reactant would would would, would be what's used up what what ends up being used up and stops the reaction from going any further. Okay. So that's usually a reactant that does end up in an overall reaction. So we're either going to run out of H2 or ICL, and then that would stop the overall reaction. Okay. So that happens. Okay. Now I don't really expect you to be able to, you know, figure out a reaction mechanism. That's for organic chemistry. Get excited. All right. Uh, but we do need to know what an elementary steps are, that they exist, and what reaction intermediates are. <clears throat> and it turns out that if you have a reaction with multiple steps, two or more steps, you'll see that in the potential energy, energy diagram is that you'll see multiple steps. Okay, and they look like those potential energy diagrams we uh, uh, drew yesterday, just kind of sandwiched together. So you'll see multiple potential energy diagrams. Okay. So this here, the reactants for my first step, and usually the reactants overall, but not always. And then it has an activation energy, Ea1, okay? And then it's going to produce this product, okay? And then that has a, is just basically a whole new reaction that needs to happen. So it has its own activation energy, and then it goes down and it produces a product. Or it might go up and do it produce product that who knows that okay so you can see two activation energies for each step but there's only, still only one enthalpy change enthalpy change was a state function remember it only matters what happens at the beginning and then okay so overall there's only one change in potential energy or change in energy for a reaction and that's between the final states whatever your products are and whatever reactants you start with doesn't matter what happens in the middle okay Well, it's a product on one reaction and a reactant on the other. So you just have to specify which step you're talking about. Okay. All right, so if you're just looking at that uh, plot, okay, you have two steps. So you actually have two rates, the rate for the first reaction, rate for the second reaction, all right? Which rate do you think is faster, the first step or the second step? First step, second, first step. How many think the first? Let's show raise the hand. I know I heard a couple first people. Now you're just holding out. You'll say anything, but make me move. I'll give you some more time. Maybe that's it. You want some more time? Think about this. It's important. Yeah, which ones? Yeah, thank you. How many think the first? First is the fastest. How many think the second is the fastest? All right, so now we're all on the second. So why do we think the second would be faster? Smaller activation energy. Perfect. Yeah, so this only has that activation energy. Okay, and so a lot more is we're assuming, I guess we got to assume at the same temperature. Um, and this, this first one is endothermic, so actually we can cool it down a little bit. But anyways, um, assuming we have the same similar temperatures, yeah, more, a lot more molecules are going to have enough activation energy to overcome that second step. And it's that first step that's really going to limit how fast the overall reaction, because it's going to be a lot slower, okay? And so um, that gives us to, I don't know why I have reaction intermediates, Written here, but anyways, there's always going to be a rate limiting step. Okay, so this is the step with the slowest rate. That really determines the overall rate.
right? If there are multiple steps, and there has to be if we're talking about rate limiting step, the reaction intermediates <coughs> are usually produced in the rate limiting step. Not always, but usually. Sometimes they're even called rate determining steps. Because usually they're uh, pretty high potential energy, so unstable. And so if they're really high potential energy and unstable, do you think they're reactive or unreactive? Reactive. So once you make those, boom, they're going to react right away. So it just takes some time to make those reactive intermediates, reaction inter intermediates. And then that's usually going to be your slowest step. Then once you make those, boom, they go on and they react fairly quickly. Okay. All right. Yay. Yeah, so we would say here that EA1, so the first step with the higher EA, is the slowest step and so we call that rate limiting. Yep, and that's the uh, inversely proportional relationship. So the higher the EA, the slower the step, or slower the rate, and slower the step. The second one does, yeah. So the second one, yeah, activation energy is only that big. So overall, <coughs> is this uh, reaction endothermic or exothermic? Got one vote for exo? Two, three, four? It is exo, okay? So you, the, the reactants are going downhill. You know, they got activation energy, but they're going from high potential energy to low potential energy. So, you know, if you did the, you know, whatever this is, let's say this is 50 joules, you know, this is 40, so be 40 minus 50, negative 10. Exo, exothermic. So, delta H is less than zero. 